I wouldn't be able to make art without these tools. These are really my favorite ones. Hello, bonjour! I'm Cécile, a French artist, and I'm here to help you in your art journey. The first tool I'm using the most, the first one really, it's this one. It's my sprayer and I have the baby one and I have the big one. The baby one is for papers and the big one is for canvases. I do a lot of things with it. I will use it to hydrate my paint. I will add a spray just when I open my airtight palette and this is especially good for gouache. You can open your airtight palette coming out from the fridge and then spray a bit so it will hydrate again your gouache. But it also works and it's really necessary on watercolor as well. You need to spray your watercolor to hydrate the pigments before painting with them and allow the water to sit for about a minute or two before painting. So plan ahead before you paint. Don't jump right in your palette. And this one, I also use it when I'm painting with gouache and when the paint is beginning to dry on the palette when I'm painting the place where I'm mixing the colors. And you need this one to hydrate the paint. So it's a slight amount of water, not too much, so it doesn't get watery and runny and you will lose a creamy consistency. It's just to get it back to being fresh and easy to maneuver. But that's not all what I do with this. I will also spray the paper before applying the gouache paint, especially for backgrounds. It will help the colors to fuse together and to get kind of a blurry look. This is what I did here. But also, once you have painted everything with gouache and you want the colors to go well together and to fuse a bit, you can spray everything you've been painting with this little guy. Well, make sure you master it. I mean, some of them will have some droplets and you don't want droplets. You really want a mist on your paper. So the colors are slightly diffusing into each other, but you're not making a swimming pool with your pigments. And I love doing that. You can tidy your paper. You can have a lot of different effects with it. It's really cool. A bit scary, I must say, but so fun. And the results, are just great. I know some of you will cringe with this one, but that's fine. Another very useful tool is this torture instrument. <laughs> it's, looks, it looks a bit weird, I must say, but it's a tube squeezer and you can get the most of your paint tube with this little tool so you don't waste anything. But first, make sure your tube is securely closed. You don't want the paint to spread everywhere. Then open it and place the tail of the tube. Squeeze and roll this. And this will push all the paint to the top of the tube. Stop at this stage because otherwise everything will pop out from the tube. And now I'm pretty sure I have all the bits and left of the tube inside. I don't waste any paint. Very easy to do, takes a second. And now I'm good to use this orange. And it also works on toothpaste tubes or any other tubes. <laughs> Cool little guy and you will use it forever because there is no way it can break or anything because it's metallic. So get a, get a metallic one, don't get the plastic one, it's not hard enough to squeeze a big tube of paint. Are you still there? So please boop the like button so YouTube knows this is a good video. Thank you, merci. I also have this little tool. I have this for ages and actually it's supposed to hold a gum an eraser, but I don't want to buy any refill for this eraser and I have better eraser than that. But this one is pretty cool if you want to place inside a pencil. So when your pencil is getting too small, you can enlarge it with this. It's kind of a pencil extender. So you can buy a pencil extender, but if you have this little tool like I do, it's just perfect to 
get something longer and more balanced in your hand when you are writing because when the pencil is too short it's getting kind of difficult to work with and talking about pencil i like to make my drawings with red um, i don't know why i feel it blends very well inside the colors it's not really visible and especially for portraits it's great and i have uh call arrays prismacolor pencil this one is really great it makes very nice lines and also i have bought a criterium with pink leads inside and if you like criterium this one is perfect but if you don't the pencil is great and i have a little pencil that someone gave me it's red on one side and blue on the other and it's just cool for making sketches and refining them so you can make the sketch in red and refine it in blue or add the shadows it's very handy because you just flip your pencil this way when you are drawing it's really cool it's a bit large but that's fine sometimes just what you need and sometimes i don't want to draw i just want to paint i just want to play with color so i will trace Yeah, I know, I know, some of you will say that tracing is cheating, but I don't think so. I think that tracing is just a tool, so use the tools you have available. And to trace, my best tip is this. This is a transfer paper, and it comes in different colors, so you always have a color that will fit your background paper and your painted. And your painting. I mean, if you have a black background, you can use the white or the yellow transfer paper and so on. And it's not greasy, it's leaving very nice marks with no problem at all. And you can even erase it if you needed. Now, this is really not expensive. It costs, I don't know, a couple of bucks. And this is a good investment, believe me. This is what I use all the time when I'm going live on YouTube and I don't want to spend too much time drawing before the painting session by itself. And a little tool that can be so useful or that can ruin everything in your painting is tape. And I have a complete video about it that I link above or in the description of the video so you can learn more. What I have is washi tape in a lot of colors so this is really inexpensive but my best best tape is this one and i buy it in large large set of boxes because i use it a lot but any kind of tape you will use you will always need to test the tape and the paper because it's not just the tape it's a couple tape and paper that will make the success or the complete failure of your painting because when you tear away the tape and you rip the paper ah, you don't want that you don't deserve that you've been painting a lot so you need to get your sharp clean white edges so believe me this one is the best i found and a little tool that I use all the time because I'm painting in sketchbook, they are clips. Because you need to hold your pages in your sketchbook so you're not getting the page in the way when you are painting. And also the page won't move when you draw or paint on it. Because if it's not secured on one side, it will move eventually. So regular clips, any kind will do. By the way, I have large one because my sketchbooks can be quite heavy sometimes. And my last tool that I use the most is my phone. Actually, I cannot show you because I'm using the phone to film. But you can use your phone in different ways for your art. The first is to take a picture of it at any stage you like. And especially when you feel that something's off, but you don't know why, you take a photo and you will flip it. You will mirror it and look at reverse. And this way you will see what is wrong in your drawing immediately. And that's especially true for portraits. And the second tip to use your phone for your art is to take a photo 
when you have painted and to switch it to black and white. And then you will see the values because values matter most than colors. And by the way, let me know if you want me to make a complete video about values. Might be interesting.